Hi, this is Tag again, and today I want to do a Voldemort guide of this here Asus P4C800. And well, this is a P4C800E Deluxe, but the placement of the voltage controllers is the same on all three P4C800 boards. Uh, I think that is a nice little addition to yesterday's video with the uh, 478 roundup. So, also, I had this board for a while and the, the volt mod on here wasn't particularly nice so I tried improving it a bit and uh, now I have a guide for it. Anyways, let's zoom in. Unfortunately I can't show you the V-Core mod on this board because we are missing, well we have insulation on here, uh, but I have another one. This is your V-Core uh, VRM controller. This is a non-E Deluxe, as you can see. This is just, let's zoom out. This is actually a board I, I never even uh, overclocked. It's just stock board. I know it posts, but that's about it. Just one of my, my spares. Uh, as you can see, this board Usual job, these heat sinks are actually from previous owner who also managed to burn this, this four pins somehow. I don't know why, but I think that the uh, uh, cable might not have fit perfectly and it had huge voltage drop in here or something. Uh, I also replaced all of these capacitors here and uh, populated the empty pads up here. Those are uh, 820 microfarad, 2.5 volts. I would recommend using uh, 6.3 volts, but I, well, ch as cheap as I am usually, I, I used uh, salvaged capacitors from some gigabyte uh, AM3 board, I think. Uh, except for the input filtering, those are um, chemeds, but those are also replaced only because they were bad. Uh, there's also VDROOP mod on here. You kind of need this because Stock this board drops at over 0.1 volts under load sometimes. Uh, again, mods afterwards in detail on the computer as always. Let's flip it over and show you. Uh, actually, while we are on the top side, one more thing. This one here, uh, I put in here. This is unpopulated normally, but this is uh, VMAM. This capacitor is VMAM. This capacitor is VMAM, this isn't, this one is, and this one is, so for your measuring points. Also, while we are at VMAM, this is a VMAM mod, usual uh, variable resistor to a, this is actually a linear regulator, so I don't know if you can say feedback pin. This should be, I think, negative bias of a op amp in this little thing. If I have this correctly, maybe not. Just, anyways, it, it functions in the way normal volt mods do. Lower resistance here, higher voltage on the memory. Unfortunately, memory VRM on this thing is on 3.3 volts, so the maximum will be about 3.2-ish. So if you want more than that, well, maybe I will, I will do a mod on one of these boards, but so far I haven't figured it out yet, and if I wanted more, more memory boards, I would just remove the FED and run some uh, external power supply probably here. Anyways, that is, might be a thing for the future. Now let's flip it over. Here is my usual monitoring. I haven't yet marked this because I actually put this on here today. As I, as I said before, I had this board volt modded for a long time and it had, actually had, has been volt modded previously by uh, the previous owner in uh, even uglier way, I would say. There is still residue of, of glue all over the board. Uh, so I <laughs> improved the volt mode twice and it still doesn't look good, I would say. Anyways, this is my monitoring. Same stuff as usual, ground pin. On the back you can see I also added some SP caps behind the CPU. That's 470 microfarad, 2.5 volt SP caps. Uh, yellow lead goes to my V-Core and Red lead goes to VMAP. So far so good. I also added a bunch of these. I don't know if they helped. 
The board was pretty good before and it still does over 300 very easily. Uh, these are just tiny MLCCs on the pads on the back of the North Bridge, just to be safe. Also, there are some people who replace the fats on these boards. So far I haven't done that. I'm not sure if it is, uh, well, necessary for these. If you run them on LN2, it seems that the, the uh, vapor from the LN2 pot cools down the surrounding area enough that the VRM doesn't overheat. But I'm also not run, never ran super long benches on here. Uh, so far I, I only ran, well seriously ran W prime on this board. Uh, actually has a, some decent scores on here. I think the highest clock W prime pass on Northwood CPUs ever was on this thing. Uh, again, but that, that might just be the super bin chip. But I, I tried to measure ripple and because I have the, the SP caps directly behind the CPU basically, I actually, if I hook up a oscilloscope probe directly here to the closest point I can find on the socket, uh, the ripple is pretty much going to be zero because the massive SP cap directly on the probe. Now that's obviously not uh, not true because well on the socket side you're going to have more ripple. Also more SP caps, just because I can. One here that's usually unpopular pad. One here. Then here in the socket there's, uh, on the stock board there is two, but I replaced them with 470 microfarad ones instead of I think 100s in here. So I think that's about it for the board now. Again, these boards, I have another story uh, about my previous one and I, I, I would like to basically make this a bit of a warning. I ran Willamette chips on this, on my previous board, not on this one. Uh, and I actually managed to, well, I didn't blow up the board, but I managed to somehow degrade uh, the FSB capability, like hugely degrade it to a point where it didn't even do 300 anymore, just by running high V cores. Now, when I say high V core, I mean over 2.5 volts, so it, not even possible with these caps. So just maybe keep that in mind. Don't don't slam Willamette chips with the bunch of voltage on this board. Or if you do, well, tell me how it went. And my my theory was that uh, there is some. Well, I degraded some capacitors on this dock board, but after I replaced them, the board wouldn't pulse at all. Maybe it was just half that the entire time. I'm not sure. Uh, anyways, maybe be a bit careful with V core. I would. I, I ran this one here over two volts, absolutely no problem, but 2.5 and, and above is probably a bit much. Also, it's not like the Willamette chip scaled, it was just me being stupid basically. Anyways, uh, let's move on to the detailed volt mod guides now. Okay, here we are. As usual, let's start with V core. Now, I'm going to make a v-core and a v droop separately for v-core you have to go one two three four five six seven pins over here so it should be this one now there is more convenient spots for this right here 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 and here that's your usual feedback pin now for values, it's really simple again. Variable resistor to ground. And I would suggest using a 10 kilo ohm or 20 kilo ohm here. So 10 to 20 kilo ohms. So that would be. I would say if you're running the board uh, mostly on ambient, go with the 20 and if you're running, planning on running it cold, uh, go with the 10 so you have more, uh, well, more precise adjustment at the higher V cores. Uh, anyways, um, V droop, 
there is one very easy way of doing this. There you can, in theory, if you're uh, happy with like good enough volt mod, so no adjustment whatsoever, you can just take a SMD resistor and put it on top of this capacitor here. I would suggest using something like 20 kilo ohms here, maybe 25 kilo ohms. Now with this you have significantly improved V-droop, but you can't adjust it. I personally would uh, recommend using something you can adjust. So same same thing again. Um, I, I like to use this pad here. And there's one pad up here that is the other side of this. I think it's, yes, it's this one. And you take those two and put a variable resistor in between. Now, the variable resistor here has a massive benefit that you can adjust the V-droop for different CPUs. Now, if you basically get rid of V-droop by doing this mod, it might not get rid of the V-droop when running a different CPU. Uh, it, it's kind of dependent on the CPU you're running. So you, I would say for optimal performance, you want to be able to uh, basically adjust your V-droop to the CPU you're currently running. So I would recommend using 50 kilo ohms here. Uh, actually, 100 is also fine. 20 would be kind of low. Uh, 50 would be ideal. So I would say 50 kilo ohm here. Uh, again, you can use 100. I, I personally use 100 on mine because I have more 100 kilo ohm uh, variable resistors than 50. Uh, but that's just, again, a lot of my, my volt mods are, well, with less than optimal uh, resistances. And I, I want to keep these guides as simple as possible and as, well, sort of perfect as possible. Uh, personally, I, I r often run like a variable resistor with a SMD resistor in parallel and another one in series to somehow get close to the correct value because I'm too cheap to buy new variable resistors and since I still have a whole box of them that are all the wrong value basically, uh, leftovers from other models and stuff like that. So yeah, anyways, that ideal is, is 50 kilo ohm here, with 50 kilo ohm you should be able to adjust basically every CPU to have a V-droop of, of, I would say, 0.03 volts or less with some uh, patience and some tweaking. With the, the 20 or 25 kilo ohm here, um, uh, I, I would guarantee you basically that it's under 100 millivolts, but mm, how good it really is really depends on your CPU at that point and on your luck basically. So that's just a a quick fix if you don't have a variable resistor uh, or you don't want to bother with tweaking uh, V-droop. Uh, maybe I should also show some grounds in this area if I can find any actually. Uh, let's see. Well, obviously the screw hole is a ground. Now, one of these pads is a ground. Let me quickly check on the board. This one would be ground here. And beyond that, you can just use the IO uh, shielding grounds I use for my mods usually because they're nice and convenient. Anyways, uh, let's move on to uh, the memory no mod. Now Northbridge on this board actually I don't think needs a mod because uh, bio settings are more than sufficient. So it's it's one of the boards that needs I would say fewer mods than most because it's actually a pretty decent board. Uh, anyways this is your little pin here also to be found here more convenient to solder and I would say same game as usual. This board, it seems. A, this is the wrong color. 
a variable resistor to ground. Uh, same same deal here, 10 to 20 kilo ohms. Again, actually here I would just go with the 10 because the, the memory running on this board most likely can tolerate voltage because, well, BH5 and stuff. Anyways, uh, maybe if you're a bit more on the cautious side, use the 20, but 10 is also fine, definitely. Uh, for grounds, we have a screw hole up here. Then we have the capacitors, let's see. Drive here, so this one is ground and this one is ground. Another screw hole here, but I wouldn't recommend. Actually, no, that's a screw hole for the for the board, not the CPU. So those are your ground options in this area. I think I didn't miss anything major. Actually, there might be a FED. No, these are these are FED driven with linear regulators, so they would just be between 3.3 or 5 volts and their respective voltage rail. So no FED grounds here. Uh, I think that's that's about it for this uh, measurement points we can see right here would be this cap here. I think that's the only one in this area that's uh, VMAM. So yeah, I hope this helped and let's end on a little V core drawing here. Now, again, uh, these mods work on all the uh, P4C 800 series. And I think P4P800 isn't too much different. But I will look into that and if it is any different, or regardless actually, I will definitely make a, a mod guide on that in the future. Anyways, I hope this was helpful for you. Bye!